Today's lesson is a second round in practicing net ionic equations specifically for precipitation reactions. We've been studying electrolytes, those substances that conduct a current when dissolved in water. Electrolytes fall into some categories of being strong, weak, or non. The strong electrolytes dissociate when placed into solution. That simply means they break apart or fall apart into their ions. What this lesson is going to practice is recognizing strong electrolytes, breaking them apart, and leaving together the non-electrolytes. And with this pattern of change, those are known as precipitates. Please follow along with me with your worksheet in front of you. When two solutions of ionic compounds are mixed, a solid may form. This type of reaction is called a precipitation reaction, and the solid produced in the reaction is known as the precipitate, that solid product that falls out of solution. You can predict whether a precipitate will form using a list of solubility rules, such as those found in the table below. When a combination of ions is described as insoluble, a precipitate forms. It really is worth reviewing the solubility rules because we're working towards memorization. Rule 1. All nitrates are soluble. All nitrates are soluble. I remember that as in my funny little sentence of chops na. Insoluble. Chops. Soluble, na, the N, it's a fun word to say, the N stands for nitrates. This polyatomic ion nitrate, no matter what it's hooked to in the first name, are soluble. Number two, salts containing the alkali metals of lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, or cesium, those are the elements found in group 1A. The alkali metals are always soluble along with the ammonium ion, another one of the A's in the chops na saying, alkali metals and ammonium are always soluble. Rule 3, most chlorides, bromides and iodides, remember those are the groups of 7A, they're called halides from the family known as halogens. They tend to be soluble except for the heavy metals of silver, mercury, or lead. Lead chloride, lead bromide, lead iodide would indeed be insoluble. They're rule breakers. Rule 4. Most sulfates are soluble except barium, lead, mercury, or calcium. Rule 5. Most hydroxides are slightly soluble to insoluble. Exceptions include barium, strontium, and calcium. Hydroxides is the H in CHOPS. Most sulfides, there's the S. Carbonates, that's the C. Chromates and phosphates are insoluble. Reminding us of an easy term, chops na, gives us a great background in determining whether or not a, a, a precipitate will form. Let's continue reading. We know there are three types of equations. We were exposed to those yesterday in our note lesson. Three types of equations that are commonly written are known as the molecular equation, showing each of the substances in the reaction as compounds with their physical states written next to the chemical formulas. There's a little AQ or S for aqueous, solid, liquid, gas, little ad adjectives in our chemical sentence. From the molecular equation, we hit the complete ionic equation, in which the compounds are separate as ions, as if they were in water. Insoluble substances are not separated. So if they're aqueous, break them apart. If they're solid, leave them together. Notice that there are ions that are present on both sides of the reaction now. Those ions that do not react are known as spectator ions. They can be eliminated from the complete ionic equation to form the net ionic equation. Take a quick look at this example. The molecular equation, which really is nothing more than a double displacement, aqueous potassium chloride reacting with aqueous lead 2 nitrate, 
forming aqueous potassium nitrate and solid lead 2 chloride. We recognize this as the driving force, our precipitate. Notice rule number three. Here's chloride hooked to a lead. Lead chloride is an insoluble product. We call that our precipitate. Everything that has the AQ adjective gets dissociated. Two KCLs, aqueous, is now written as two potassium ions, two chloride ions, both aqueous. Notice the charge is present. A lead ion and two units of nitrate ion is the dissociated form of lead to nitrate. On the product side, aqueous lead, excuse me, aqueous potassium nitrate with the charges and the solid is left together. PBCL2 is a solid non-electrolyte. Any ionic compound that is water soluble is a strong electrolyte. Break apart the strong, leave together the weak or non-electrolytes such as this precipitate. Do you see the spectators being crossed out? We cross out potassium. We cross out the nitrate, leaving us the net ionic equation of the formation of our precipitate. Please do this with me. It is more commonly accepted to see the positive ions written first, combining with the negative ion written second, forming the formation here of that solid precipitate of lead to chloride. It's a good pattern to get into. The AP board likes to see the positive written first. You try it. We're going to write complete ionic equations. Cross out the spectator ions to give the net ionic equations. Be sure to include the physical states for each species. Let me model one. Lithium chloride. Would that be aqueous or solid? Well, lithium chloride, first name is alkali metal lithium, always, sol always soluble. Silver nitrate, aqueous, always soluble. How about a driving force? Not the nitrate, certainly not with the lithium. Both of these are in the na, always soluble. Here's my solid driving force. This would be AQ. Now to carry this on, we're going to need either the back of this paper. You may certainly just keep flipping. You might find it more conducive to find a new scrap piece of paper here. I'm going to just write my name to remember that this is coming in for homework credit tomorrow when we come together for class. And so I'll just say that's first or sixth hour. And we're writing out our net ionic equations. You may certainly have some lined paper out to do the same. Equation one, I'll just recopy LiCl, which we decided was aqueous. Reacting with silver nitrate, aqueous. Forming AgCl, there's the solid, and LiNO3, aqueous. This is our molecular equation from number one. The complete ionic dissociates all aqueous ionic compounds. Are we balanced? Yeah. Lithium ion, aqueous, plus a chloride ion, aqueous, plus an aqueous ion of silver, and an aqueous ion of nitrate. Forms. Leave together the solid, AgCl silver chloride. Dissociate the strong electrolyte. We get an aqueous ion of lithium and the aqueous ion of nitrate. What are your spectators? Here's a lithium ion on both sides. It is a spectator. Here's the nitrate ion on both sides. It's the spectator. Writing out the net ionic equation, write the positive first, aqueous ion of silver with an aqueous ion of chloride forming solid silver chloride. 
This is a pattern that will continue for the remaining examples. We've done number one. We were given the molecular equations. I added on the states of matter adjective. I broke apart the strong electrolytes, those ionic compounds that are water soluble. I left together the driving force. I precipitated silver chloride. I then removed the spectators and wrote out the net ionic equation. You're going to follow that same pattern for number two through number six. While I have you, let me model one from the second set, number seven. That way you'll have one of each to continue your work from. Write the net ionic equation for each of the following, indicating the spectator ions. So this really is no different, except now I'm more challenged by taking the words into a balanced equation first. A solution of aluminum bromide. I would represent that by AlBr3 dissolved in water is Aq. That's the solution part of it. Reacts with is a positive sign. A solution of sodium hydroxide. That's NaOH aqueous. To form is our arrow. And the precipitate, aluminum hydroxide, double displacement, aluminum goes to hydroxide. Al is a plus 3, OH is a minus 1, so that's where they're getting AlOH3. Aluminum will hook to hydroxide. Even though it's not stated, we understand there's a second product. Sodium goes to bromide. We have a plus 1, minus 1, and that is aqueous. This is our solid. Sodium bromide remains aqueous. This will need coefficients when we balance. Three bromines, three bromines, three OHs, three sodium, that's it, one three, one three. This is our molecular equation. The states of matter are in there and it's balanced. Convert this into a complete ionic equation, breaking apart these strong electrolytes, the water-soluble salts. We would designate the aqueous ion of aluminum. There it comes. The aqueous ion of aluminum, Al plus 3, Aq. There's three bromide ions carrying a minus 1, aqueous. Three carries through the sodium hydroxide, so there's three aqueous ions of sodium and three aqueous ions of the polyatomic hydroxide. There's the left-hand side dissociated. For the product side, we leave together our solid non-electrolyte, the precipitate of aluminum hydroxide, and dissociate into aqueous ions of sodium and aqueous ions of bromide. We were asked to recognize the spectator ions and I'll do that with just simply highlighting or circling. I noticed that three sodium ions remain unchanged and the bromide ions remain unchanged. Those are my spectator ions. Now when I write my net ionic equation, my net ionic equation eliminates those spectators and here's what we have left. We have an aqueous ion of aluminum. We have three aqueous ions of hydroxide combining to form the solid precipitate of aluminum hydroxide. The net ionic equation has been written and I've identified the spectator ions. That models number seven for you, leaving you eight, nine, and ten. Tomorrow when you come to class or the next time that we meet, one through ten should be written either on lined paper, all three reactions for each of those equations, all three of them complete, and then the net ionic equation from that provided balanced equation. You'll probably find it easiest just to pull out some lined paper 
That way you've got plenty of room to write all ten equations. I'll collect this the next class meeting. I do have an answer key so that you know that you're practicing correctly and I'll include that as a link as well. Just a hard copy answer link so that you have an opportunity to check your work. Good luck and practice hard.